Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to be making a bandsaw blade and copper chopper. I'm going to start off with giving my bandsaw blades a dip in some muriatic acid to get them nice and clean and ready to go into our canister. As per standard, the canister has a white paint, spray paint on the inside to keep the inside from sticking to the actual can itself. And we're going to use some 1090 powder with 2% nickel. The 2% nickel that's in this steel powder is what's going to give it the contrast down the line whenever we etch the knife. And don't forget, every time you do canister Damascus, you need to vibrate the can as much as possible to get that powder all the way in all the nooks and crannies in between the bandsaw blades. And here I'm just going to weld the can shut, making sure to intentionally leave a couple of spots open in the weld so that the can can breathe and the gases can flow out. As always, my first press is always top to bottom, make sure everything consolidates in. If I start my press sideways, I run the risk of popping off those caps. So it's always important to start from top to bottom. I developed a very aggressive dip in the can. You can see it right there as I'm starting to press it. And that dip actually creates an issue down the line in the can. I can't remove the can like I normally do. I have to uh, let it cool down and rip off. And I'll just keep working it down, making sure everything's nice and consolidated. If you notice those cold spots in the can as I'm working it down, that's because the can is starting to detach from the billet inside and it's uh, hitting different temperatures. Now that my cap is off, all I'm going to do is slowly work those corners in, trying to release the whole can from it. After a bit of work, you can see that it's essentially loose on the inside. As I said earlier in the video, I could not get the can to slide out like I normally do because of that dip that it has on the inside. So I'm left with no other option than to let it cool down and cut the cap off normally. But the inside contents are completely separated from the can. And I consider that a very good forge weld. And with the side of the can off, the billet comes out nice and easy. From here, my goal is to work it down to be about an inch by an inch. And I'm just going to slowly work it down so that I can twist it. These are my uh, one inch squaring dies. And here I'm hitting it with my one inch squaring dies, making sure I get a nice, even, and consistent bar all the way through. That way I can go on ahead and give it a twist to add more character to it. Before I can twist it though, I have to knock down all the corners, get it more octagonal or maybe even trying to get it as cylindrical as possible so that none of the corners try to shear when I twist it. And here I'm going to start my twist. Twisting a one inch bar is not as fun as it looks. It takes quite a bit of force and you gotta make sure your bar is very, very, very hot. If not, that thing will not budge at all. But eventually I got it as tight as I could get it and I'm pretty happy with the end result. And here I'm just gonna try to straighten it up a little bit before I go and flatten it under my press. And here I'm just working it down, getting to about a consistent one quarter all the way through. That way I can use it for my outside cladding on my knife. You can really see that grain starting to pop out in there through that forge scale. Looks really, really cool.
and here are my layers bandsaw blade copper and with a steel core of ADC RV2 one of the things that I dislike about doing copper layered knives is all the welding I have to do whenever I go and prep my copper billet I have to weld all the way around the knife and basically make sure that if I do overheat my knife I have welding to make sure it doesn't splatter out everywhere which really it takes it takes a while because copper does not weld so you kind of have to weld over it it's a pain but it gives you a very very nice result and here I'm just slowly pressing working it down making sure I don't rip it apart and making sure I keep consistent heat throughout the knife roughly making sure I do not go over 1900 degrees because at that point the copper starts to melt and it gets more difficult the thinner I go if I'm not mistaken I get a little too hot here and I have a little bit of copper start melting out but it wasn't a big deal and now that the billet is cut and ready I'm just gonna slowly work it down with the 2x72 what I'm looking for here is to grind off all the mouth steel all the welding that I did and expose the copper and the core and everything so I'm just gonna slowly take it and make sure that I have the copper exposed throughout the entire knife Here I run into a very pleasant surprise as I'm trying to drill in my pinholes and this drill bit does absolutely nothing to this knife. So I have to anneal it so hopefully I can drill through it. And here I'm in the forge annealing it. And after a very tedious annealing process, it cuts like butter and I get through my three pins in record time. Now here we're not going to judge. I did not do anything else throughout the entire day. So I came out in sandals and heat treated the knife, threw it in the oven. And that's basically all I did that day. So I didn't worry about putting on shoes. And here we are out of the temper. And now I have shoes on. Since I didn't do much grinding prior to the heat treat process, I uh, got a little bit of a warp, so I decided I'm just going to put it on the surface grinder and just take off all the material until I get a nice clean surface. Now that I have my knife prepped, I'm going to start slowly working it down, trying to expose the core and work down the sides. Now that the sides are exposed, I'm going to go in with a 1 inch attachment wheel and I'm going to clean up that finger toil. That way my finger sits in there nice and comfortably. Since this is more of a chopper and less of a kitchen knife, I'm going with Paduk. I really like to use Paduk because it gets a nice, beautiful, red, vibrant color. The only issue with it is that I don't have it in stabilized form. I just have it in its raw wood form. So hopefully down the line, once I can get my hands on some stabilizing equipment, I can use this more often in my knife builds, specifically in my kitchen knife builds because I really do love the look of Paduk wood. And here I'm trying something I don't really do. I'm using my portal band to cut it because I, my other band saw had stuff on it and I didn't feel like moving it. 
and I wanted to see if it cuts it very well. I normally just cut steel here, but I figure if it can cut steel, it can cut wood. And it did a pretty good job at it. Sorry for the shakiness on the camera. I guess it was touching the drill press and it vibrated and I didn't know until I edited. So yeah, my bad. And here we're back on the port van and like I said, it does pretty good work of this wood and this is a hard wood. It does not cut very easily. So I might be using this guy more often or I might buy another one and put a, a more woodworking blade on it because it worked pretty well and it takes up not too much space in the shop as you've noticed on some of my previous knives I do hidden pins but since this is a chopper I decided that I was gonna make my pins go all the way through it gives a better mechanical hold and I believe it'll add extra toughness to the overall construction and here I'm just grinding down the wood a little bit not quite all the way to the steel but making the gap just enough so I don't get too much of a pull of epoxy whenever I glue it up and we hand sand yay this is ferret chloride it's the acid that I use to etch my knives keep it on one gallon jug to the side and on most of my knives that are small enough I like to just pour it into this one gallon pitcher and I just put it in there and it's easy to put it back in and store it afterwards and this is the part where I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe if you like cool builds like this. Because, I mean, look at that thing. Isn't it gorgeous? Don't you just want to subscribe to my channel and watch all my videos and all that good stuff? If you do decide to subscribe, it'll help me buy more coffee so I can transform these knives into the cooler versions other than just regular etching them. Because that dark on the Damascus is beautiful. And here's just standard procedure. I'm gonna glue up my handle. And while I'm doing this, for any of my regular viewers that watch my videos when they come out, not the people that watch it three, four, five weeks after, or maybe you too, I probably won't be posting any videos in the next week or two because I'm gonna be concentrating 100% on my Viking Challenger build. So, yeah. Content will be dry for about two or three weeks, but hopefully we'll get back to schedule and I can provide you guys with an awesome build. I have very cool things planned and hopefully they all work out and I don't just end up scrapping the billet and doing something entirely different last minute. And here I'm just going to clean off all the epoxy all the way around the knife. Whenever you're grinding your knife, getting all the epoxy off. A good rule of thumb is if you see sparks, it's pretty clean. And here I'm just going to start slowly grinding in my shape for my handle. In this case, I'm going to do a bit of a Coke bottle. And I'm just using the pin as reference so that I can get two even sides. Now that I have both those sides done, I'm going to start working in that little area where your fingers go into. I do not know what it's called, but that thing. Normally I use a small wheel to do that, but this time since I already have the rest plate on there, I want to see if I can do it with just the edge of the platen and it comes out kind of ugly but it gets the job done I probably won't do it like that again but it gets the job done it just causes a lot more hand sanding down the line and 
And here I'm just blending in all my lines, getting it ready for a nice, quick, easy hand sand, which I do not record because just hand sanding is boring. So we're gonna skip over that and get to sharpening our knife. Here I'm using a 240 grit belt to sharpen the knife. I have to be very careful not to damage my edge or overheat it. I am running my 2x72 grinder at about a 25-30%. That way it doesn't get the knife too hot and I'm going back and forth making sure I develop a nice good burr so that I can work it down. Afterwards I switch over to a 1200 grit belt and I'm doing the same thing. Just I'm slowly carefully working it back and forth making sure to thin down that edge, thin down that burr so I get a nice clean cutting edge. Afterwards, I take it to a strop, which I don't show here, but always strop at the end. Make sure your burr is off so you get a nice clean cutting edge. And here we have a final look at the knife and all of its beauty. I really like to use that ACRV2 or maybe some 1095 in my core because once I coffee etch it, it gets a real beautiful dark black that the 52100 that I've been using recently doesn't quite get. I'm also very happy with the look of the bandsaw blades. It has a lot of movement in it because it's just a whole bunch of random bandsaw blades and a canister. And paired up with that copper, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It almost looks kind of like wrought iron with all those waves through it and stuff. Overall, great build. And as always, I appreciate you guys and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.